Hi, this is Peggy Morgan from Season 18 of The Ultimate Fighter. Um, the premiere episode aired last night for the first time, and I'd just like to talk a little bit about it and try to give you guys some insight into what it was like to be there. I'm going to do my best to anticipate the questions I think I would have if I were watching the show. I plan to do one of these each week, so if there's something specific you'd like me to address, feel free to tweet me your questions. It's at Peggy Morgan MMA. Uh, obviously, at first, there's a lot of stuff I'm not going to be able to answer, but as the season progresses and more things are revealed, I'll try to go back and answer the things I haven't already. I'm also doing a weekly blog for MMAweekly.com, so you should pop over and check that out. I'm going to try to cover different material for both so that there's not too much overlap. Rhonda described watching the premiere episode as seeing her babies on the first day of school, and definitely seeing it for the first time, I understood what she meant. There was a degree of shyness and awkwardness to all of us, except maybe Shayna, who was immediately comfortable in front of the camera, that I really think went away over time. I mean, clearly I'm always a little bit awkward, but I think I got better than I was in the first episode, at least. Obviously, going into this, I knew I was going to be on a television show, and I knew there'd be cameras everywhere, but then the reality of actually being there and having the cameras on me was something that took some time to adjust to. Definitely the first time I was in confessional, with those bright lights shining in my eyes and the camera right in my face, I had this moment of kind of panic and elation where I was like, wow, this is really going to be on TV, and who knows how many people are going to be watching this. And it was super exciting, but then at the same time extremely nerve-wracking. Another moment when it really, really hit me that I was on The Ultimate Fighter was the first time we walked into the UFC Training Center. Um, we walked in through the back door and went down the hallway past the locker rooms and then through those double doors into the gym and seeing Dana standing there by the cage waiting for us was just like a really holy shit moment. Um, and then we see Rhonda and Misha Tate standing next to Dana, which was a huge surprise because we were expecting to see Kat Zingano. Going into this, I'd really been hoping to be on Kat's team just because I felt like her style is probably more compatible with mine. She's really more of a pusher and a grinder. I kind of always felt like MMA was something that just really came naturally to Rhonda. Like she'll just throw you on the ground and armbar you, whereas I feel like I have to work my ass off to get anything, and I kind of feel like Kat Zingano's the same. But as soon as I saw Misha there, I was like, nah, I want to be on Team Rousey for sure. I honestly can't rationally explain why I didn't want to train with Misha. Um, she's obviously a great fighter, and she's a very friendly person. Um, it was just my instinct was I'd be better off with Rhonda. So immediately as soon as I saw that those were my two choices, I was really, really, really hoping that Rhonda would choose me. I didn't actually have the opportunity to meet Rhonda until the next day. Um, before the elimination fights, each fighter was assigned randomly to a corner, and I was in the Team Rousey corner. I don't know if you can really tell from TV, but those locker rooms are really, really small. So when you have 16 different fighters trying to warm up for a fight, it gets really cramped in there. So I was kind of like wedged in a corner, um, trying to collect my thoughts and visualize what I wanted to do in the cage when, when Rhonda walked in. And immediately, like, a large group of people ran over and were kind of like, hey, Rhonda, hey, Rhonda, hey, Rhonda. And obviously, I wanted to do the same. Um, but I didn't want to look like a geek, so... I kind of hid out and waited for a while. Eventually I did go over and introduce myself. And I was really surprised by how friendly and personable she is. I think on TV she can definitely come across as a little bit bitchy. But then in person she's really funny and really relaxed and really easy to talk to. So at that point I was even more determined to get on Team Rousey if possible. Another cool moment for me was getting to talk to Dana White for the first time. Um, I was actually waiting in line for the bathroom. One of the things that kind of sucks about the UFC Training Center is that there aren't a ton of bathrooms there, which usually isn't a big deal, but when you have 32 people getting ready to fight and everybody's taking nervous pee-pees like every 10 minutes, the lines get a little bit crazy. So I was waiting in line to pee for like the 999th time that day when Dana walked past and he kind of stopped, turned around and looked at me, he goes, how the fuck do you fight at 135 pounds? And I kind of laughed and just told him it wasn't easy and he was like, you better make it worth it. Um, so obviously that was something that I thought about and remembered as I was walking out to the cage. Walking out to the cage for my elimination fight is probably something I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. Um, I've seen so many amazing fighters walk through those double doors and then standing behind them myself and feeling the camera over my shoulder and knowing that it was about to be my turn, was it was completely surreal. Um, 
one thing that stands out is when you walk out to a fight in the UFC training center, it's very, very quiet. Normally, when you come out to a fight, there's music and screaming, but there it's like silence and just the smattering of applause. And I really had to remind myself that this wasn't a sparring session. This was actually the most important fight of my life. It's hard to describe what was going through my head when I actually got into the cage. I was really trying to block out the cameras and block out the crowd and just focus on what I had to do. Um, it's always really, really hot inside of a cage under those lights, but for some reason that UFC cage felt especially hot. And then they sprayed the mat with this sticky stuff so that the fighter's feet won't slip, but it's really, really abrasive, so we all ended up with like mat burns on the bottoms of our feet and on our skin where we touched the mats. Um, I also want to say that I did see the arm bar there, um, but I chose not to take it because I, I could feel the ref stepping in and I knew I could finish that with the TKO. And I didn't want to risk falling off the top and losing a good position. I remember as the ref raised my hand thinking, holy shit, I'm in the ultimate fighter house. But it was, it was really surreal at that point. It was something that I was having a hard time fully grasping. I feel like I was almost more nervous for the team picking than I was for my elimination fight. At that point, I really, really, really wanted to be on Rhonda's team. So every time it was Misha's turn to choose, I'd be thinking to myself, please don't pick me. Please don't pick me. Um, I knew that she and Juliana were good friends and training partners, but I was still a little bit surprised that she chose Juliana instead of Shayna. Just because all of Shayna's experience, I really thought that she was kind of a shoe in to be first pick. But for whatever reason, um, Misha chose to pick Juliana instead of Shayna, um, which I thought, I honestly thought was a really dumb move at that point. I was extremely relieved and happy when Rhonda chose me. Um, something that's kind of funny is Jessica Ricosi insisted that when Rhonda called her over, both Jessamine and Shayna kind of sighed and looked really disappointed, and they both ardently denied this was true. And we were really, really hoping that when the premiere episode came out, um, we'd be able to see whether or not this actually happened, but unfortunately we couldn't really see Jessamine and Shayna's reaction, so it's it's still going to be like a she said, she said situation with those three. I was pretty psyched when Rhonda chose Shayna and Juliana for first match, just because I thought it was a gross mismatch and I was looking forward to seeing a bloodbath. Um, obviously I can't give away anything that happens, but I do think that next week's episode is going to be super exciting and you guys should tune in. That's about all I have for this week. Um, Remember, you can tweet me your questions. It's at Peggy Morgan MMA, and then check out my blog on MMA Weekly. All right, thanks. Hi, this is Peggy Morgan, and this is Peggy Morgan's video blog. You're Jimmy, because I'm Hi, Peggy. I'm Jimmy Quinlan. I'm assisting Peggy Morgan in her his video blog. We got that all wrong. That was all backwards. Testing. One, two, three. Your camera's over here, so you have to make sure you look into the dot. See where the dot is? Don't look at yourself, look at the dot. I dot, okay. Because otherwise, people are like, why are you looking over there? And your eyes look you wait, wait, like, wait, let me do Jimmy eyes. Why are you looking over there? Are you recording this, I hope? <laughs>